This is a story about Bert Adams. Bert has problems. To begin with, while Bert sells a good line of food products, business could be a lot better. Things could be a lot better on the home front, too. Here's Betty, Bert's ever-loving, patient wife. And here's Jimmy, Bert's not-so-patient son. He didn't do anything, really. But Bert has to be mad at somebody. Well, that's natural. The job goes sour, and pretty soon you're the square in the family circle. No, maybe now I can get something done. Let's see, where was I? Yeah, 52, 47, divided by 18, twice as Ah, that's plain enough. What a wrecking. Doggone it, Betty, something's wrong and I just can't figure it out. What do you mean, dear? Well, my sales. I've been checking my points in the contest. Looks like I won't do any better in this one than I did in any of the others. Oh, no. Not another pen and pencil set. Uh-huh. Another pen and pencil set, if I make that. Anyone we haven't given one of those things to? Well, maybe Uncle George. No, he got one last Christmas. I'm sorry, dear. Someday, I, I wish we could win a big prize. Something for you, honey. Something real nice. I don't see how I'll ever make it. So that's why you're so touchy this morning. Uh-huh. Oh, and say, I'm sorry I, I blew up at Jimmy that way. I know. It's just that you've been trying so hard. Yes, but it looks like it takes more than hard work. I can sell them all right the first time, but I don't seem to be getting reorders. That grocer over Milburn, for instance. He still got most of our last shipment. I sure wish I knew the answer. I sure wish that... Hey, it's getting late. Give us a kiss, honey. I gotta run. Bye, honey. Bye, dear. <laughs> P-R-O-F-I-T. In the food business, I'm pretty important. And popular. You ought to see how folks keep after me. <laughs> it's high time you and I were getting together, Bert. You know, you really haven't been doing right by me. That's why I fixed it so you'd pay me this flying visit. You did that. Why, you No, 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 Bert. No hard feelings, surely. No hard feelings? Hmm. You got any idea of the size of this bump back here? No, I'm sorry about that. But it won't show with your hat on. Anyway, it could be a sort of a bump of knowledge. Now down to business. Your sales are uh, a bit thin, aren't they? Well, I wouldn't do... Uh... Not so hot. Mm -hmm. But uh, how did you know? I've been keeping an eye on you for a long time. You've got possibilities. But it appears to me you need a little help. Yes, sir. Give you an idea so. And... Oh, excuse me. Would you, would you like a cigarette? Oh, sure. Now, getting back to those sales. Well, I don't know what's wrong. I hit hard on price, quality, and turnover. Well, those things are all important enough. Maybe you're just doing what every other salesman does. The main thing is, are you selling ideas? 
Ideas that will help retailers move your goods. Well, what, what do you mean? Well, just this. And people simply don't just buy a loaf of bread or a pound of butter. They buy the benefits that those products will give them. Now, when the grocer can make people see and want those benefits, the product is bound to sell. Yes, but the ideas you just mentioned, where do they come in? Ideas can help the grocer sell your products to the shopper. And ideas that sell the product's benefits will increase sales and you'll get reorders. <laughs> but let's not jump the gun. First, I'd like to show you a few facts about how your customer's business operates. Look up there. Not too many years ago, nearly all retail food sales were on a strictly service basis, with clerks waiting on each customer. And then came self-service. When shoppers realized the convenience of self-service, as well as its many other advantages, they went for it in a big way. Surrounded by new ideas, they were free to pick and choose, shopping as slowly or as rapidly as they wished. Actually, more than two-thirds of today's food dollars are spent in self-service operations, in big markets and smaller stores as well. Today's modern stores represent big investments, some a million dollars or more. Some stores have nearly a mile of aisleways. Sure, I, I know it's big business, but where do I come in? Right here. Today's grocer faces some pretty important problems. Have you thought much about that? With the problems I've got? Uh-huh. Your grocer's problems are yours too, Bert. If you can help him solve his problems, I think you'll find most of your own problems will be solved. Now, look over here. In these days, a grocer has greater overhead due to the equipment and operating costs of doing business in a modern way. Then there's the matter of lower market. Average markup used to be 25 to 30 percent. Today, it's 11 to 18 percent. These factors mean less net profit per dollar of sales. Now, the average net profit once was 10 percent. Today, it's 2 percent or less. So the grocer has to do a greater volume of business to make money. Now, all three of these problems are getting tougher all the time. That gives your customer a lot to think about, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it sure does. Uh -huh. And to offset these problems, your customer needs more traffic, faster turnover, extra sales. That's what it takes to move goods out of their stores. And that's their real goal, isn't it? Of course, you can tell me some of the things that move goods, can't you, Bert? Oh, sure. Price, promotions, coupons, uh, premiums, advertising, packaging, display, customer convenience, a lot of other important things, too. But to be successful, all of them depend on store traffic. Today, more than ever before, food retailers are competing for people. And once these people are in a store, it's important for you as a salesman to know how they shop and why they buy. Self-service has changed shopping habits a lot, you know. Today, up to two-thirds of all self-service food sales are the result of store decisions. Decisions to buy this or that particular product are made right in the market, where brands and foods fight it out in the battle of the budget. You see, Bert, many people enter a store with their general needs in mind, but they're also looking for ideas on what to buy. Nobody sells them, they sell themselves. And the smart merchandiser keeps that in mind. Yeah, now I see what you're driving at. But uh, come again on those store decisions, will you? Here, I'll show you. Let's tune in on our thoughts. Need a vegetable for dinner. Mmm, broccoli looks good today. She knew she wanted some kind of vegetable, but the actual decision on the purchase is taking place in the store. And here's that most important store decision of all, the impulse purchase. Something the shopper hadn't the vaguest idea of buying when she walked into the store. My, they look good. Many times, these extra sales make the difference between profit and loss for your retailers. Now, give them good ideas on how to get these extra sales. You won't have to worry about reorders. Impulse sales have become big business, Bert. Well over one-third of all foods bought today are bought on impulse. Completely unplanned extra purchases that bring in extra income. But see for yourself. Here's what this shopper planned to buy. And here's what she bought on impulse. 
more than a third of the total. Look what it means in dollars and cents. And one third is only average. Some stores do much better, pushing their net profits even higher. Here's something else to consider. Many products bought mostly on impulse are also high profit items, like ice cream, snacks, delicatessen products, and others. You see why it's so important to have ideas about how to increase impulse sales, Bert? I see how it would mean real money to a grocer. And it can mean real money to you, too. And now here are a few examples of how important impulse purchases are. Two-thirds of potato chip sales are impulse purchases. Over three-fourths of candy sales. Over one-half of cigarette sales and over two-thirds of the sales of cookies. Well, it sounds impressive, all right. But how do you know it's right? One-half, two-thirds, three-quarters? Where do you find out all this? From the shoppers themselves, through professional survey reports. Women are asked what they plan to buy as they enter the store. Then they're checked again after they finish shopping to see what they actually did buy. It's a pretty foolproof system. Oh, but it's not the figures themselves that are so important. It's the facts that they prove. And they prove the choppers, to a great extent, are deciding on food purchases after they reach the store. They prove the choppers are buying things they had absolutely no idea of buying when they came in. And believe me, Bert, that's a real opportunity. Not only for retailers, but for salesmen like yourself. I see. And now you're going to tell me how to cash in on that opportunity, right? Uh-uh. Oh. I simply want to show you some of the ideas that are moving goods in modern food stores. But it's going to be up to you to apply what you're going to see and develop merchandising ideas of your own. Okay, that sounds fair enough. Fine. Then follow me. Well, I'm, I'm afraid it's going to take me a little longer. i got to do this the hard way. Oh, oh sorry. Say, if I could show my customers how to make their profits go up that easy, I'd be doing all right. <laughs> That's right. You know, then, just for a starter, look in there. The part the salesman plays is mighty important. Good packaging, advertising, and all the rest can't get the most out of impulse buying unless the salesman does his part. Here's a competitor of yours with a good idea, Burn. A competitor? Sure. You're all after the same food dollar, aren't you? Oh, I never thought of it that way, but, well, I guess you're right at that. You see, he first sold the retailer on the profit of a mass display. Next, he builds the display near the bread. Why? To tie in his impulse product with a demand item. When people buy bread, they're tempted to buy jam, too. See what I mean? Everybody benefited from this salesman's idea. Now, self-service produce. Not only does prepackaging cut overhead and less handling and shrinkage, but such ideas appeal to shoppers who like convenience and protected freshness. Just listen. Mmm. The spinach looks fresh and all clean, ready for cooking. Fine. Well, I certainly like to shop here. Everything looks good. You see, Bert, when a store installs modern conveniences like self-service produce, store traffic is increased. And a good salesman helps the retailer get the most out of that increased traffic. Here's how one salesman does it. By combining many related salad items not normally displayed together, he not only helps the sale of his salad dressings, but helps the grocer push other items as well. Departmentalization on a small scale. Ideas like this can be profitable almost anywhere in a food store. And here's a high profit high-impulse food that's mighty important as a source of extra income for grocers. So plenty of thought is given to ideas that help sell it. Tie-ins appeal to a variety of tastes. And Bert, merchandising ideas which help shoppers plan what to serve make it easy for them to decide to buy. Look, Pete, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> You're supposed to. That's the whole point of modern food store operation, to make people hungry for as many things as possible. Hungry enough to buy a lot more than they plan to. Sure works on me. <laughs> well, then feast your eyes on this special department. And listen. Oh, party snacks. 
Better get something for Tuesday. The girls will be over for bridge. Potato chips are always good. I guess I better get them something else. Seems like that crowd is always hungry. See how an attractive display of a variety of snacks builds extra sales, Bert? And here, another salesman has helped a customer departmentalize. He's also taken advantage of the findings of a survey which shows that dried fruits and nuts sell faster when they're displayed next to the produce department. Here's how to use impulses in the dairy department. Impulses that mean profits. Food is its own best salesman. So, transparent wrappers for appetite appeal, as well as that special protection people appreciate. Shoppers find these ready-cut portions more convenient. Mmm. Looks good. And here's an idea to remember. Milk, a high-demand item, is on the lower shelf. Impulse products are up where they're easy to see and easy to reach. A practical selling idea that many salesmen put to work for them. Self-service meats. Here's one of the most important developments in modern food merchandising. It not only increases meat sales, but surveys show that this type of operation usually raises the average amount of overall food purchases, too. My, what a lovely steak. Well, of all the news. Well, shoppers will be shoppers. Wherever self-service meats have been installed, the percentage of impulse sales has gone up. Salesmen make good use of that knowledge, too. By putting high-impulse meats first in the flow of traffic, the shopper is tempted before she buys her main course meats. And so the salesman's suggestion on a change of location pays off with increased sales of pickup items. Here, a baked goods salesman has planned his display to take full advantage of the appetite appeal of his product, as well as the attention-getting power of the package. I think that's about everything. Let's see now what else. Oh, that looks good. Oh, I wonder if I ought to. Oh, but I do like jelly roll. Oh, yeah. One loaf of white bread. Okay. Got that. Men are an increasing influence in the buying of foods. Sour rye. Oh, I sure like sour rye. I think I'll get this, too. You see, Bert, an idea, a suggestion at the right time, will spark impulses. And impulses build profits for the grocer. You know, I think I'm finally beginning to get your point. Fine. But don't forget, your products are in real competition with all foods, not just with competing lines. Food store shoppers are confronted by a panorama of food varieties. Packaged to attract the eye, they all compete for the consumer's food dollar. Many stores have more than 3,000 items on sale at once. And, of course, it's impossible to give special promotion to more than a small percentage of these items. Most of the time, at the point of sale, the package is the only selling force present. So it's got to be good. Good packaging and display ideas help stir impulses that move non-food items, too. Just see how good packaging has been applied to some of these non-food items. But let's get on to this packaging idea. The small family market is much bigger than you might think, Bert. Here's a special department for small packages. The smaller sized packages are a convenience for small families because they offer more variety, are consumed more quickly and take far less storage space. When real benefits are provided, sales are increased. Here's more competition. Impulse items that sell strongly on appetite appeal through visibility. But some products use other ways to stimulate sales, such as premiums. <laughs> With some consumers, they make quite a hit. Unusual display ideas are good merchandising, especially when combined with modern packaging methods. But listen. Oh, crackers. The last box we got was a little soggy before we could use them up. Hmm, individual packages inside. Well, they'll keep fresh longer. This display caught her attention, and she likes the fractional packaging idea because it protects the quality of the crackers. It's an idea that stresses benefits, an idea that moves merchandise, 
And the package itself gave that salesman something additional to sell. And then here's another sales maker. Packages that stimulate appetite appeal, attract attention, increase impulse buying. Of course, there are a few uh, human problems in self-service that sometimes give a manager gray hairs. Here's a food sold almost entirely on impulse. These gleaming packages catch the eye and let you see what's inside. And so candy moves into shopping basket after shopping basket. The volume has grown with self-service until food stores do one-fifth of the nation's candy business. Again, the package gives the salesman a strong talking point. Here's another idea that sells. An eye-catching advertisement teamed with a good package and a special display. The ad reminds folks, here's the product they've read about. The display makes it easy to see and easy to buy. Say, there doesn't seem to be any end to these food selling ideas. There isn't. With a little thought, you might get a few for your own product. But keep this in mind. In suggesting merchandising ideas, remember that nothing sells food like food itself. Get appetite appeal working on your side. Hi, you see? Appetite appeal. A powerful selling force. And here's another. The colorful display has caught the interest of this newlywed. Young homemakers are usually looking for all the help they can get when it comes to meals. Just listen. I need a vegetable. But how do I cook it? Oh, here, it tells me. Why, it's easy. It only takes six minutes. Seabird, good packaging, tempting pictures, and tips on cooking helped her decide to buy. And you can bet the bid for impulse sales goes on right up to the checkout counter. And here's the last chance for getting impulse sales. So the good merchandiser takes advantage of it. Albert, how about it? Does this begin to show you some of the possibilities for using merchandising ideas to get reorders? It sure does. You know, I was just thinking, that grocer over in Melbourne, if I could get him to let me set up a tie-in display, and I know just the spot to... Ah, <laughs> that's the spirit. It takes ideas to move merchandise. After you get the grocer's order, your goods are only half sold. Only when the consumer buys the product is your sale complete. When you sell ideas that get consumers to buy, the cash-in on impulse buying habits that help your grocer turn impulse to profit through extra sales, greater turnover, and more traffic, then, mister, you're really selling. And knowledge of shopping habits, Bert, can help you get ideas and can help you sell ideas, not just things. The mark of a real salesman is his ability to sell ideas that move merchandise. It's the salesmen of America who keep the wheels of industry turning. It's the salesmen, Bert, who have contributed the imagination and determination that have helped create a standard of living in America that is the envy of the entire world. Gee, that's right. Pete, huh? I got an idea. Suppose I went... Oh, no, Mrs. Murphy. I'm fine. In fact, I'm in great shape. And believe it or not, Bert really was in great shape. As the weeks flew by, Bert went to town. Orders and reorders, cashing in on ideas, selling more and more merchandise by selling ideas to move more and more merchandise. He planned and sold ideas which emphasized product benefits. And the more he put his knowledge of shopping habits to work, the higher he climbed on the sales ladder until...